bit uh, difficult of, uh, to find some find your voice off of, um, um, but let's start really easily. Maybe we should uh, say hi to you. Thanks for coming. And uh, we were a little afraid that we were sitting alone here. Um, Sarita is from Kontorkunstmuseum. Rine, Andrea, Lenny from Calcutta. Philip is part of the documentation crew. Maybe we'd have also have to say that, that Philip is camera uh, person. I studied uh, directing, but that doesn't mean anything for my for the film because it was a very basic democratic uh, cutting process with a lot of um, effort. I noticed that we're completely missing a scene in that film because it was so uh, done the last minute. We have a couple of questions uh, prepared, but um, we can start with answer asking questions. And then uh, if there's uh, questions from the audience, uh, just uh, raise your arm and uh, and then we we'll start there. I'll start with uh, you, Lenny. Uh, Lenny is um, works for the Calcutta crew, or was working. Oh, you still 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 there. Yeah, I just became an LA statesman. Oh, you're yeah, so a crew member for for been there for years. You've uh, been in Control Cosmos for years. It's Interesting. For how did you get to Kultur Cosmos, and how does the work work there? What are the crews? Uh, how do this work, and how can you describe the collaboration? What's the positive, and what's the maybe difficult? So there is no. Can you hear me? It's, I don't think there is. There is no way. That somebody said as a rule. Nobody said a blueprint to follow. I was here early on. It was right up my alley. I was living up in the truck. And months before the festival, I started helping out, uh, got to know each other, and and we as a group, as a crew, we were ready and. And we want, just wanted to explore the space as a group. And they, we were organizing a space, and we worked in a different venue, different space. And Calcutta was residing in the formerly space from the Bar 25, from Baschbelsen. And we just uh, took it over from them. And these are two different stories. This one is my story, is connected to Kultur Cosmos. And uh, just being here and play along. And I think uh, we sent it in a documentary, actually. This enthusiasm we experience that you just bring with you, and then you're in the scene, and you're working, and you're not working, that anything is happening, and you're just part of, you just want to see the party happening, not only being in the peppy, and you're just excited about just seeing things to thrive, and then you, and if it happens, and if it happens, you're just there. It's not about. Uh, it's not about that somebody told you you've done a great job. You're just part of it, and then you just feel welcomed or not. And so uh, there's also the collective in Wiesenthal. Maybe you tell yeah. us a little about that. Uh, how much? How do you? How does the Cosmos uh, support the work of collective? You run a bar, for example, and. Uh, Concerning us, there's the Yam in Berlin, in, Berlin, in Rostock, excuse me. There are collectives that are working in this scene that are working pro bono um, whole year round and during the during fusion, we're trying to raise some money. And Wiesenthal is a little bit something different I'm working with. The Calcutta is not Wiesenthal, another way around. Uh, Wiesenthal, to just to explain myself real quick, uh, is next near to Berlin. It's a group of people from the music scene and organizing parties, promoting parties, concerts, and so on. 
And at our group, there are also people who have nothing to do with organizing concerts or parties. So there is not a one-on-one -on -one comparison to fusion. And uh, it didn't like uh, go back all the way to Wiesenthal. And we, through working with cust uh, through with working with fusion, and and through giving back, and then we also um, got some money, and then we bought tents, and that we used uh, these tents at the next event of Wiesenthal. And so this is basically like a circle, and other crews might be different. Or uh, other crews, it might be more precise. It might be so that the other crews are working five days. They are working as a toilet crew, and then they are getting the money. They are raising their funds, and then they're raising of these funds to support their own project. And I think that's very precious. So they get this chance. Uh, uh, adding to that, um, maybe there's uh, a lot of prejudice and f cliches to uh, concerning the money. M work and money, obviously, are color closely correlated. A uh, question to Lina. Can you uh, describe a little what is there, uh, what kind of cliches are there, what uh, prejudices, and what do you have to answer? I, I don't know. What, uh, so, for example, that Kulturkosmos works into their own pocket and what uh, run th what's earned here and can things that can't be paid so much and uh, there's a lot of you know rumors so these are people that never actually uh, inter got interested in uh, how to organize the festival and I don't know how many thousands just of uh, trash bags we are giving out that's just crazy uh, how the cost also exploded with the whole festival and we are not uh, putting this money into our own package but ex other way around, we're putting this money giving out to the other projects. So there is no private economy behind it. Nobody is making a big buck on the of the festival. So Kultur Cosmos pays, uh, employs a lot of uh, um, people and um and there's uh, people who work uh, voluntarily. Then there's crews who work uh, maybe for their collective um, and uh, for common cause. And then the, I imagine there's also some tension if you have a system where different people uh, in different uh, work in different uh, kind of employee realities. How do you work with these tensions? Maybe Maybe it's too fundamental, but... So the question is not completely clear. I think you have to ask a, a question more precisely. Do you know how unfair maybe the cultural cosmos is giving out jobs and how the whole situation is? Of course, this is a big issue. We're trying to to be fair and, uh, but of course we're, we can't be fair all the time. So there's a question coming up. So so I got the quite the opposite question. 60,000 people around, 6,000 tickets. Everybody is uh, paying uh, 100 bucks around. So that's 6 million bucks. Um, what are you, how are you coping with that? Just the trust question, the stages. Um, I'm asking myself, um, over the years, of course, this has added up uh, uh, more pressure. And I think it's just amazing that you just get along with yeah. the only... So many people, uh, maybe artists and uh, crews, uh, will play for a little, very little money or for no nothing or uh, donate the money. This is what... Uh, it's critical for some people that uh, it's being worked a lot and paid too little, but that to that, it can be that uh, cheap. The we rent the technology, but uh, that the festival price uh, is so low because there's a lot of volunteer work and, and 
trip work. Thanks to all the thousands who are so engaged in this. It's fantastic. Do we have another There's thing? another question coming right up. Question? So that's like a small, like a quiet applause just from here, yeah? So I'm excited. Um, the excitement and the transparency you show in the film you just presented, you just want to say thank you. And I'm looking so much forward to the next fusion already. Thank you. Hi. I think this question was very interesting concerning the, all these differences and all the constraints and that nobody is actually pocketing the money. So as far as I've understood, there is like not an equal pay system for everybody. So on the, on the individual end, on a crew level, on a um, service level, and of course there are certain constraints. And I think it's very interesting that it's still working out and this whole structure is and I, I wanted to ask, like, what are the rules uh, concerning these different types of payment? And yeah, so and there's these tensions, of course, and uh, they relate to the infrastructure. There's uh, you can only do certain things with companies concerning techno technology and um, and sanitary things and. But also, we have a lot of groups who uh, work with these uh, areas, and uh, we try to relieve these tensions and try to find the right mixture. And the people, most of the people, 90% of the people uh, who work here uh, do this uh, for for the, or 80% or even less, do this uh, for this um, deal, for the day or group deal, and that goes back to the crew and work for the person-related deal, and this is a daily uh, rate, and it's very low, and uh, there's, the, we're really happy that people take the time and uh, and uh, work voluntarily and uh, are, or for the, you know, for, for, for the crew or for the entry fee, and uh, um, are open to that tension, and don't just say like, okay, this technician gets a lot of money j and and not me, that's not nice. Uh, but the project is so big that uh, we have such a big infrastructure that it's not, not, not possible differently. Um, we, if we would run it commercially and had a company for everything that the, then the ticket price, uh, no, the, yeah, tech, the ticket price is less than five days in a camping, uh, camp spot and now we have like 25 uh, stages and you if we would do the same with uh, all with companies and we would pay like 400 uh, euros entry and it would be a completely different audience uh, applause also from the audio team translation team I want to say something to uh, the tension uh, we have obviously have this I don't want to escape this but I don't I uh, thought the question was so general that we discuss this a lot. Should we pay the work, and how can you pay work? How uh, it's not 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 this work is not the same for everybody, and uh, what does it mean for everybody? We find just systems, and there's uh, unjust uh, unju injustices. On the other hand, there's uh, old agreements, and every time we find new solutions and uh, search for news, uh, new solutions, but um, they're not not perfect, and yeah, maybe uh, they get better at some point, and it, that, that's our goal, so um, we've tried to find, we have also different opinions, and we try to find solutions, yeah. May I ask, like, how is it actually working? Like the process of uh, deciding things. Uh, are you voting in the context of the culture cosmos as a 
We have a plenary so and uh, 18 people, and uh, we meet almost every week, a month, where except for winter. We meet in winter, we meet, meet every two months, and then we do two days of plenary sitting, one one day, six hours, the next 12, and then we talk about things, and then we make decisions. What do we spend money on? Uh, what, um, what are we not happy with? Uh, the great thing uh, that I think is uh, that we are can uh, decide on an equal level in the group and uh, someone said I uh, someone says I don't want this for this and this reason then we discuss this through and uh, we have a lot of uh, we've debated a lot of things uh, to the bottom you know like um, like the, the fence uh, which has almost eaten us up uh, as a topic and then we talk about this uh, the discussion culture is sometimes difficult and uh, you would like like to run away and can't do, not listen to it anymore, but uh, then we manage it. And then we just uh, re reach an agreement to this, and then we don't vote on this. So last year there was no fusion, and there was a reason behind that. And I would like to know, question to Max, what do you think, what actually happened in this year where there was no fusion happening, and what happened internally uh, what was the reason and what kind of discussions actually led possible. to the non-fusion? Because it's possible. Not only because um, not last because uh, to show to people uh, that who say yeah, it's, uh, it's so commercial you can't let it out and you haven't put another fence around it and secure it yourself and you're only looking on the money and then uh, uh, to quote your cliches, um, and um, just to say, no, we no, we can. Uh, this festival doesn't happen to happen happen year every year. We, it's possible, and we can let it go for once. And we uh, also have some questions from the audience. So One the quest question. Adding on to the movie, so concerning the expansion, like where's the pressure coming from? More, more participants, more people attracted, and I think um, we don't have to grow bigger all the time. It's we already reached such a high standard, and the question of more and more is maybe not the right question. Yeah, what do you think? For a couple of years, how many? Don't, I don't know how many we cut down the. We limited the amount of visitors, but there's an expansion of stages, but not of guests. And that's something you have to think about, obviously. But the expansion uh, is finished, and we won't grow. The number of audience participants won't grow, and that step has already happened. Mm. Uh, we, I'm getting up. And you already talked about the fans, so I got the feeling that that there are more and more security um, s security stuff. Um, so you just cut off the wristbands, and it's going to throw being thrown into the trash. And there's this fans that why are there more and more security measures being taken? And I think there might be a reason, but I wanted to know why. And of course, there are people trying to sneak into the venue, sneak into the festival. And this has taken proportions we never thought about. And one thing that didn't get answered. And what happened during this? What actually happened during this year of the non-fusion? Uh, what kind of ideas did you get? Yeah. I can say something about the security measures. And the defense, it was very difficult decisions. Uh, we had a lot of stomach ache with it. We didn't like it. But for me, there was uh, a year. I didn't know where the space was closed. And it was clear that if panic erupts, then people will just trample each other dead. It's not safe anymore. And it was for me the reason it, to decide that. I have a responsibility as an uh, event organizer. If something happens on that space, it's uh, it's going to be so terrible that I will do everything that it doesn't happen. And um, if we, that means that we have to give out uh, like coins, that's the consequence. And when we build the fence, uh, a year after, uh, 
it was 10,000, it was empty, more, much more empty, it was like 10,000 people less on the space. I don't know how, I don't know how my, how they got over the fence, but it was, must have been thousands in that year before. Maybe what back to, about to the, the fusion year. free year. Uh, yeah, from, why did we do it? We, because we did it? But we, because we liked it, we wanted to do it, and uh, we discussed it a lot, and then uh, we had uh, the idea that we have a year time, we can change everything and think and solve all the problems, but we didn't do that. Um, and um, I, uh, I mean, as a, res uh, uh, as a bottom line, we talked about a lot of things without structure, about, gr about a group, with the groups we work together, with the plenary sessions, uh, what do we do new? A couple of you might have seen that a couple of things change on the stages um, and also in the, some things in the organization changed and um, what we always do, but after Fusion, see how we can do it, things differently, but um, it feels uh, quite good. Uh, but um, yeah, I think it's worked quite a bit. I, I just want wanted to ask uh, someone coming from the outside. It's just making a lot of fun. I think we saw this also in the documentary. And then there are certain things like order and precision. This is the death of creativity. And if you're too much in the box, and if you're in the box for 20 years, every year there's this festival, even though it might be a lot of fun even though there might be so just to break through these mind barriers you don't have to do this or every year and you even can have fun without this festival or you can do your own festival yeah so be creative on your own make your own shit don't just uh, depend on others yes be responsible for yourself and do shit on your own so we're here on the left Hi, I'm Sebastian. I wanted to ask, um, I'm, I have a question to the, uh, I'm a support myself. I'm here 10 days before the festival, so thank you very much for being part of the festival. I'm having a lot of fun. And how are you, how satisfied, how confident are you with the support system? Is it working well? Is it not working too well? What do you actually think of the support system? How is it working for you? So I just wanted to say thank you very much for being able to so be a supporter. I want to thank you that you spent your time to be with us and uh, support us voluntarily uh, for some catering and festival ticket. Uh, that's uh, to edge sword. Um, uh, in the system that we do it, uh, we're totally relying on this system, um, that there's voluntary work and in this there's also uh, the infrastructure things, kitchen, entry, uh, these kind of things, um, building the stages. Um, um, that there's, of course, there's criticism. There's uh, yeah, always criticism in voluntary work. How do you weigh in? Uh, how can you, uh, yeah. You worked eight hours a day in the kitchen. That's <laughs> fantastic. Without you, people wouldn't have gotten some food. But um, on the other hand, how do you want to weigh that up? And uh, with only the entrance ticket, uh, just with a good time and uh, catering, how, how do you want to weigh that? Uh, uh, my, uh, I weighed that in money. You know, there's, there's uh, people. You know, uh, that not that pay many people. Uh, people are not coming to the festival. Some others come, uh, don't come. Uh, ma grandmother's ill, and then they don't. And but it, it generally works quite well. Um, uh, back then, uh, with the Arbeitsamt, it was like you could but buy a ticket of the Arbeitsamt, and then people didn't appear to the um, shifts, uh, and then the connection wasn't there. And so you just said, don't didn't say the, you don't bind the people to the project. But it was more like uh, like a, um, 
freelance thing and uh, people would just go there and uh, 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 go do their job and leave and then you know, back then people just worked um, uh, yeah, we didn't. Uh, we now we, we did. Everything's have changed. We have ATMs now. The people don't need the money anymore. That like uh, people need a ticket, which uh, is difficult for the lottery. And then um, all the supporters, the registrations work in uh, no November, December, and then we need to rely on that people actually want to do this. And um, we hope from this uh, thing that uh, there's also going to be some. Uh, uh, people coming into the crew, people leave this whole thing and other people come uh, there. Uh, maybe you made the greatest dessert of the whole fusion and then maybe and then next year you are head cook, head chef yeah, with a Mecklenburger. Yeah. So yeah. we're back on the right side in front of the mixing. I got a question concerning the one year of non-fusion. Were you playing that quite long? So we were playing this in advance, or or we're just thinking, oh, we just need the pause for the for the year. So that was 2017. So that's short applause for Lucy. Um, yeah, it wasn't. We thought about it for a while. It wasn't clear that we can actually um, f afford it. Uh, we started saving up a little money. It was an idea that uh, was a, we could realize. So, we th I think like for two, we prepared it for two years. Rhythm and uh, movement. Uh, at this edge of the Hi, I just asked myself, and will there be a fusion next year? I was thinking, I uh, asked myself, and what we would be a good way to involve ourselves in the festival with the festival? Uh, maybe. maybe. Slight clue. Who knows? I mean, I mean <laughs> confusion right now. <laughs> Just uh, go party right now. Yeah. And uh, get involved. Uh, the support system uh, is uh, great. Getting in, uh, and then get to know the project. And then uh, also there's uh, many ways to contact uh, um, the e normal email address is being answered, and people think about the answers a lot. And how do you get involved? Um, no. No. Also, other things. And then just work and uh, write, and uh, also, um, I'm here on the other side. Yes. Of the so my question is. Uh, concerning the commercialization of the festival, I think it's not. I think it's also about the spirit of the guests and in the times that pa pa past times, and there are more and more venues where you just get uh, entertainment from the front, and there's less space for interpersonal communication. So on the one side, I have one question: Do you have something like a feeling that it tends to be? that there is like a uh, frontier between crews organizing artists on the one side and uh, people just being as visitors. Is, do you think that there's like a fence? In my, uh, I feel that um, it's difficult to uh, notice these uh, movements and these changes. Uh, there was, uh, a lot of consumery uh, um, approach was there a few years ago, and uh, a lot of new people uh, expected things just to con consume and to be a le more lean back culture and uh, wanted to and expected things, and it became really strong and and uh, where I, um, 
uh, it stopped that uh, the guests were like 100% uh, um, being involved, guests being involved 100%, and there's a lot of movement from the guests nowadays. It's gotten better that um, I, I see the guests as a large crew, a huge crew, and it's a goal and a, an attempt, but it, um, you can't just... Uh, Start this from a drawing board in the top. Uh, there's a lot of screws here and there, nuts and bolts to tighten, and, and then you can. Um, uh, for the size of the festival, it's. Uh, I mean, it's uh, uh, quite nice. Uh, it can be better, obviously, but uh, it's nothing that just happens. Um, it's. Uh, we uh, we so used to con be consuming, and we're such in a consume consume society that um, uh, say there's so many people who say I want this, I want this, and you just say, well, organize it yourself, you know, dude. Um, I uh, it's uh, obviously it's a goal, but uh, I think it's going quite well. I'd stay. We have so we got three questions. First one coming up. Hi. Thank you very much for organizing the whole festival. And the question I got, actually viewing the documentary too, and where where does pro bono work stuff, where do you ha actually have to pay people? And the person that has been working on a bar, for example, so that was like small part of the organization, uh, is there something like a ranking order? Um, is there something like a battle who is who has which backstage pass, who's getting what kind of money, what kind of respect. And of course, um, it's super difficult <laughs> to decide and who is going to get money for what kind of job and how you're dealing with this situation. Who, is, uh, who of you is getting money, which of course is okay to uh, get money for the jobs you provide, for the service you provide. And um, what are your perspectives on this situation now? Yeah. Many. <laughs> many different ones. Uh, there's uh, many different discussions. Yeah. Um, do you earn money for you what you get? Uh, so, I'm, I, so my work is um, for from the first uh, years from Calcutta, I was the daddy of the whole thing. I got, I started two months prior to fusion uh, uh, to organize like every day. It was everything from getting fridges to uh, everything, you know. And there's not c kind of work and where you say, oh, I had a great day, so. Um, <coughs> and then um, <coughs> I came out there, you will, you will show, you know, you would call me crazy. Um, it was uh, more or less voluntarily, and uh, there's a lot of things like that. And um, the point is that I don't know uh, how do how do I say this? Um, yeah, of course, if you're in this whole thing and see the only the festival, then everybody will try and uh, be part of it. And some defines it uh, what what by, by the restaurant they get and what they're allowed to do, and that's human. I wouldn't uh, call it a fusion thing; it's a human thing. And you're asking the wrong thing to the wrong person um, because it's nothing from the top, uh, just prescribed from the top. How do we deal with uh, topic with this topic? Well, how how do you want to? What do you want to dictate from the top? I mean, it's not possible. You can create a frame and try uh, as far as possible to to prevent a total um, um, escalation uh, by not paying too much to people. But uh, you can't, you know, do it right for everybody. Uh, uh, also, uh, I, w I might I want to also say something about this. Once uh, Andreas said. There's this daily rate for ten, 75 people per day. Um, and if you worked for a month uh, of, uh, and you get 1,500 euros, you, everybody in the plenum gets this as well. And everybody working in the infrastructure or at the Botschaft or 
Um, the, there's the fast daily rate uh, kitchen, electricity, water, and so on. Then there's the projects uh, who work for their project, uh, who don't do this uh, on a daily rate, uh, but, but uh, more like uh, how much hours, like the garbage crew, they do 250 hours, um, and they, um, get, they do this differently, and they, um, and then there's the floors, there's, uh, they do this uh, for themselves, and then Calcutta runs the bar, and they, uh, they keep some money for them, and do this their way, and uh, then they, yeah, they make their own, own decision. They either pay some to the culture cosmos, or and, um, if there's if it's more voluntary work, they they pay less to us. If they're more hedonist uh, and they're more on the pocket, they pay more for us. Or Mensch Meyer, I have to say something about that. And then, and then, uh, this is uh, the way to we try this to do this. There's not so much trusted, and yeah. And then there's uh, foreign companies who are earn more, like technology companies, uh, tech DJs. Um, there's uh, how do you pay DJs? Uh, if a DJ pays a uh, place, you only pay them 250 euros. And then uh, then they, they donate it. And then there's a DJ from whatever who gets a 1,000, you know. And they will also be talked about and organized. And, some many, a lot of them play for nothing, and uh, in the whole fucking system, there's no justice. Um, there's um, the question uh, backstage. Uh, let's uh, do one backstage. Don't give different, give out different uh, wristbands, you know. Um, but we're, uh, but that others don't do what we tell them and have their own uh, mind. Uh, our own plenary sessions is very diverse. Um, every crew is, uh, we search uh, ways, and um, I don't, I agree with uh, Lenny a little. It uh, depends on the crews that give out privileges. There some things happen uh, uh, you can't imagine. Then they, they can work for me, you know, I'm more important, uh, these kind of things. But um, it's on us, and it's in us. Uh, uh, this hierarchization of uh, feeling cooler and better and uh, having privileges. Um, the question is, how, how do you distribute privileges and things and resources? Uh, yeah, so. <coughs> OK. The Mike, Mike had a frage. Mike got a question. There is. So. Die Frage ist ja, was ist mit realen Utopien, auf Utopien? Und äh, Fusion klingt so ein bisschen wie ein gutes Beispiel für eine reale Utopie. Ähm, die Frage ist also, wie, ich weiß nicht, wie viele Jahre es jetzt Fusion gibt, aber wie viel, äh, viele Leute sind durch dieses Festival gekommen, auf eine oder andere Weise. Was denkt ihr, dass der Einfluss da auf den, den Mainstream-Gesellschaft ist? Äh, habt ihr das Gefühl, dass Fusion... Uh, ein, uh, ein Eindruck uh, oder die, die Leute dazu animiert hat, mehr Dinge zu tun. Uh, gibt es mehr Potenzial, das von der Fusion kommt? Ja. Wir sind, ich bin mir nicht sicher, dass uh, ich hoffe, dass uh, ich einen Punkt gefunden habe. Du kannst den Effekt nicht messen, aber Du solltest dir vorstellen, was die Gesellschaft, wie die Gesellschaft aussehen könnte, wenn es nicht Fusion ist. Aber du kannst es nicht sagen. Ich bin sehr glücklich, dass es die Fusion gibt, aber ich weiß es halt nicht. Das ist eine der besten Sachen, die die Gesellschaft hat, aber es gibt ein viel Gedenke, was in diesem Jahr, wo wir darüber geredet haben, es gibt einen Typen namens Felix, der darüber redet, wie viel äh, wie der menschliche, das menschliche Gehirn funktioniert. Ähm, manche Leute äh, rennen darum, äh, die reden darüber, die sind äh, fünf, zehn, 15 Tage hier. Das ist ein guter Gedanke. You're still ready? We can, let's start here. From over here. Right away. 
I got a question, even if you can't hear it anymore. Hi it's all concerning hierarchy and concerning hierarchy of the fusion festival, Kultur Cosmos itself. And I sometimes I got the feeling that sometimes I got the feeling that other parties that is a lot of it's it's centered around a certain persons uh, quite a lot. How how is the structure of decisions inside of the Kultur Cosmos? And also between people living on the site itself, is it, is it, uh, is it basically democ it's basic democratic um, organization? How are you coping with all of that? Yeah. So um, it's. Um uh, organization that is has a board. It's for people. It was two people before, I think. Yeah, and uh, there is uh, where who has who does does a lot has a lot of power. Um, there's not only one person that decides everything. It changes a lot, but um, there is uh, alpha male who does a lot and has a lot of power, but we just a lot discuss a lot, and um, a lot of decisions are made through discussions, and uh, <coughs> if you think a lot, uh, if, you're allowed, uh, if you're able to listen to criticism, and then you can, uh, um, you have to, <coughs> you have to justify yourself, but you can also um, create a lot of things. Uh, it's uh, very loose. Um, if you want to be ready to do things, uh, want to do things, then and are able to listen to criticism, then uh, you can uh, also create things, um, do do things. We talked a lot uh, about a hierarchy instead of hierarchy, where a lot of uh, areas take over when they are needed, um, when like not. When there's not um, like in the brain, where uh, different parts uh, are working together, but uh, if you do certain things, then certain things, certain parts take over. We're not basic democratic. Basic democratic. We don't uh, vote on things. We search for consent. Uh, we um, don't. Um, we don't uh, even uh, we, if if we don't like the decisions, we also don't uh, do them. And there's a lot of, you know, there's resistance uh, to things. And there's no people just to just uh, take out the orders. And um, um, so the question is, when is the decision made uh, at the table or by doing? And uh, that therefore, it's an organism. So um, um, yeah. Yeah, I would say there is obviously the hierarchy, and we know th about this. But uh, it's the same process, and we've been working about these hierarchies for quite a while. And uh, but obviously, we are not uh, not the perfect point, um, and we're, it's something that we think about a lot. Yes, we just reached 9 o'clock, and we got one last question. So, one last question. I just want to thank, want to say something real quick. Respect, first and foremost. What you've been doing for all these years, a lot of great festivals we've had. I think it's been a cool evolution of the future. And there's a certain feeling of freedom, and everything is really nice. Yeah, so please keep on keeping on. Thank you very much. Okay. Yo. Thank you from us uh, for the openers. And uh, we <laughs> could be a very annoying film team as well. And uh, thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. And we were also very resistant to things. And uh, thank you for your openers. And, uh, Thank you to everybody who uh, wasn't weren't on the film. There's 
this uh, this uh, saying "kill your darlings" in the filmmaking process. We uh, accompanied a lot of film people who were then not in the final cut. So, no. Thanks uh, for being here. Thank you very much. And that's been it from the translation team who has been working here for quite some time. We've been enjoying the festival too. Thanks. Fusion Beste. Abfahrt. <laughs>